Greetings, mortal. Are you ready to shock, terrify, and scare in the name of our Lord the Darkling? Then perhaps you have what it takes. Come, join me as we investigate Ghost Master. All right, folks, it's me, your Uncle Chance. And today, we're going to take a look at Ghostmaster and try and figure out whether you should play this game. Now, I'm not going to let this intro play on for too long, but what you need to know is that the only way that this intro could be more naughty's high school horror is if the offsprings, the kids aren't alright, were playing over the top of it. Suffice to say that these kids definitely ain't alright, and they definitely got more than they bargained for when they used the Ouija board to summon me, Chaz. Now, Ghostmaster was released in 2003 and developed by Sick Puppies which is a developer that doesn't exist anymore and appears to have only released Ghostmaster. And honestly, I think that's a shame because despite the flaws the game has, there's a lot of cool ideas here. And for the most part, the critical reception of the game reflected that it had some pretty good reviews. We're talking like anywhere between 6 out of 10 and 8 out of 10 for the most part. On Metacritic, it still has some pretty hot solid scores, unless it's the Xbox version. And without trying to get too flowery, it's definitely a game that wears its heart on its sleeve and it just oozes atmosphere. So let's take a look at what Ghostmaster actually is. In Ghostmaster, the player plays a, well, a Ghostmaster. And don't worry if the word Ghostmaster is already starting to sound like nonsense to you, it's also sounding like that to me. And your role as the Ghostmaster, at least at first, is to scare people out of their domiciles. Eventually you find a being called the Darkling and you have to start feeding its souls. And I'm going to leave it there because there is a little bit of plot and honestly, it's a schlocky fun. Like if you've seen The Evil Dead, you kind of have an idea of where this plot is going. There is also just a wonderful entire level dedicated to an Evil Dead reference, which I will be bringing up. So you, the player, you, you don't have any direct influence over anything in the world. You instead have a roster of ghosts who you are the master over because of course. And at the start of each level, you will pick from your roster of ghosts up to a defined amount by the level. And that is going to be your set of powers, essentially. How do you get more ghosts? Well, well, we'll get to that bit, don't worry. You can also just select a recommended suite of ghosts, and that, that's a perfectly fine thing to do. You'll be able to achieve your level goal by doing that, but there is definitely an incentive to go back and replay these levels with your stronger ghosts later on in order to collect gold plasm, which you will then spend to upgrade your current ghosts. So there's this nice little feedback loop going on. Unlock level, acquire new ghosts, get plasm, spend plasm to upgrade ghosts, complete level faster, get more plasm, get more upgrades. Now, let's take a look at how this all comes together by looking at the first level, Haunting 101. Now, one thing I love about Haunting 101 is that it's a very much traditional horror setup. It's a sorority house. It appears that the semester hasn't quite started yet, so not everybody's moved in. In typical naughty's fashion, everybody is just wearing towels. And should you choose it, the game will give you your tutorial here. Hala gosh darn lulia! It's a game that has a skippable tutorial. The controls are pretty much just the same as any other strategy game. The only thing that I had to change to make it comfortable to play was to change the camera movement keys from the arrow keys to WASD. Thankfully, rebinding controls is really easy. It's just an option in the menu. While we are talking about the menu, however, I do have to bring up that this game does not support 1080p natively. I had to go in and I had to edit something in the Steam folder. I will provide a link to what you need to do down below so that if you do decide to play this game, you can get that resolution support. Now, the first thing to talk about are your haunters. The recommended haunters for this first level have been Boo, Clatterclaws, Cogjammer, and Shivers. Boo is this delightful slimer looking fella. Clatterclaws is a spider, so I'm not going to put that on full screen because I know that some people are really icky about spiders. Cogjammer is a gremlin and Shivers, well, he shivers. Each ghost has a fetter. What is a fetter? Well, a fetter is a lot like a territory, so Boo, for example, his fetter is inside, so he can be put in any room as long as it's inside. But Cogjammer's fetter is electrical, so Cogjammer can only be attached to electrical things, but it has to be something big. It can't just be a light switch. Some of the other fetters that you'll come across throughout the game are air, fire, murder, violence. There are more, but just to give you an idea of the kind of things that you'll be looking at, you know? Honestly, the murder and violence fetters can give you some really, really dark things to think about when, like, they're attached to a couch or a bed. But we'll give the developers the benefit of the doubt and just say that it's more meant as people who were murdered in their sleep, right? Yeah, we can all agree on that. Cool. Yeah, no more thinking about that. Alongside fetters, each ghost has a set of powers. Boo, for example, will start with rattle chains, which will call people into the area. Leak 
which will cause water to spring from everywhere, giving people a little bit of a shock. Hide and seek, where he will just chase them, causing a jump in terror. And kinesis, where he will just cause objects in the room to fly about and scare the living daylight out of anybody in the room. Each of these powers are attached to power bands. Each power band is going to cost progressively more power the higher you go. And your power bar, or plasm, is there in the top left. Your maximum plasm will be constantly ticking down. The way to increase it is to scare some fools. So you're probably thinking now that with Boo, you can lure somebody into a room that has a fair few ghosties in it and then just have this massive spike of activity that will just scare everybody in there. That's a good strategy that works sometimes, but it won't work all the time. And that means it's time to talk about the stats. Each model has three stats. They have terror, madness, and belief. Terror is pretty self-explanatory. Once that red bit gets further than the white bit, that model is going to flee. Madness works the same way. Once the yellow bar exceeds the white bar, that victim will go insane. But insanity means something different in Ghostmaster. That character can no longer be terrified. But they are worth more points at the end of the level. So you get more of the gold plasm. And they will stay in the level running around scaring anybody who is currently not insane. However, you won't have a lot of options to drive somebody insane at the beginning of the game. That tends to come in later on. And finally, we have belief. Belief is basically a meter that measures how much of a bastard this person's going to be to scare. If their belief is higher, they, they believe in the supernatural. Anything that occurs to them is going to scare the living daylights out of them. If they have a lower belief, then they really don't care because they can rationalize it away. You're going to have to build that belief up before you can actually scare them off. Now, this all sounds kind of complex, but honestly, it's going to teach you over time. Your first mission is going to be very, very easy. You have seven people to scare and you have one optional objective. There's very little that can go wrong here. They aren't going to be able to banish you. This is just your opportunity to get familiar with the fetters, the powers, and scaring some nerds. Now you'll have noticed I said optional objective. If you take a look at the left side of the screen at our ghost pack here, you can see that there is a ghost sat on its own. One of the first things that you should probably do anytime that you enter a new level is to see how many ghosts are in that little area and go around the level and try and find them. If you click on them, you get this. It'd be a different matter if I got free, mind you. I'd whip up a storm to wake the dead! <laughs> so as you can probably guess, that's a little hint on how you unlock that ghost. For weather witch, it's really simple. You attach Ogjammer to the radio above her and have him use his powers and the vacuum cleaner will explode freeing Weather Witch and she joins your team. But there is something else. Even before you've freed them, you can use their powers. They are an additional power set. Granted, not super useful in this level, but in later levels, it will be a big benefit. So you've freed the witch. You've scared the sorority girls. What happens next? Well, we get the end screen. You'll get a bunch of points based on whether you've freed the optional ghosts or whether you've driven people to flee in terror or driven them insane. And you'll also get a time bonus, which is honestly one of the things that I don't like about this game because the time bonus will directly affect the amount of gold plasm you get for this level. And that means if you want to get everything, you're going to have to replay levels a lot of times, or you can experiment over and over again to try and find the ideal setup to deal with this, or you can do the wrong thing and look with guide and just find out the fastest way to do a level. But in a game like this, what I really want to do is just take my time and I want to try and get things set up. I mean, you can go into a first person view of every human in the place, Sometimes you just want to try and get the wacky haunted house going on where you can follow one person's viewpoint as they just walk through this hellish maze of ghosts that you've set up, you know? Granted, that is a fairly minor gripe. I can just play the game that I want to play it. I just won't be optimally rewarded for it. In the second level, Weird Seance, we have the same objective as the first level. Scare the hell out of everybody and get them out of there. There are a lot more people to scare and there are a few more ghosts to rescue, but it's, it's the same. You, you just need to repeat what you did before, but better. 
which is good. That's that's a very good way to introduce the player to the mechanics. It's in our third level, Calamityville Horror, that things start to go both right and very, very wrong. You see, the objective for this level is to have police be called to the house and have them find two of the three bodies that are in the place. And that means in a small amount, we are at the mercy of the AI. And the AI is not always great. As you can see on the first playthrough of this level for this review, I managed to get four people stuck in the same doorway. This obviously led to a complete restart of the level. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of a break. It's an old game. It's honestly a wonder that it runs on modern systems. And it is quite cool what they're trying to get you to do in this level because you've got three puzzles that you've got to try and solve. You have Maxine Factor in the attic who you need to have a ghost with a luring ability in there to get somebody to break the door open. And then you have to have one of the mortals discover the body to call the police. You have Arclight in the basement who got bricked up behind a wall and says that he can possess somebody to get out. But he can't see anyone and he needs to see them to possess them. So you have Stonewall uses Tremor ability next to it to shake a brick loose and then have a ghost lure somebody next to Arclight so they pop their head through the wall and Arclight can possess them. And finally on the roof you've got Static who got stuck in a chimney. So once again you have Stonewall use Tremor near him so that the skeleton starts to fall and then you go down into the room below that and have Boo use his Kinesis to pull it down that pops out of the fireplace. But then the mortals have to contact the police. They'll do that after one body's discovered and then they'll turn up at the house and they'll start to explore and if they find two of the three bodies the level's over. Regardless of whether you've unlocked those optional ghosts or not. Now I watched one of these coppers walk around the house for about five minutes before they even got close to discovering a body because they would just go up the stairs and down the stairs and up the stairs and down the stairs. This kind of causes a problem when your scoring is largely time based. But hey ho, we haven't hit anything too egregious yet. That's going to come in a couple of levels time. Finally we come into the end of act one with the level summoners not included. This is the Evil Dead reference that I was talking about earlier to the extent that one of the characters is called Bruce Elm. Now, if you've seen The Evil Dead, you'll know that Ash is played by Bruce Campbell. Ash obviously being a type of tree, much like Elm. Groovy. And our objective for this level is to get our three people into the basement and have them read from a book. Which again, if you've seen The Evil Dead, that's the plot. Now, the fun thing about this level is that it doesn't actually involve scaring anybody until right at the end. Our current objective is to figure out a way to get our boys into the basement. And if you use the recommended ghost setup for this level, you'll be able to get them into the basement pretty easily. You'll be able to get the book down. You'll be able to get them to read from the book. But then the crazy professor shows up and this professor has a gun. So your objective now becomes to scare the professor away before he can injure the researchers. How you go about that is obviously going to be up to you. Personally, I just like to put everything that I've got into the basement and just fire it all It'll take a little bit of time, but eventually the professor is going to lose his marbles and he's going to flee. The book will be read and the Darkling will be summoned. We then enter Act 2. And I'm not going to cover a whole lot of Act 2, but I am going to give you two little anecdotes. At the beginning of Act 2, you have two choices. You can go to Deadfellas or The Unusual Suspects. Now, as far back as I can remember, I've always wanted to be a gangster. So I've obviously got to go for Deadfellas. Deadfellas, as you can see, is set on a boat, and your objective is to scare the Don. Now, the Don isn't a very strong believer, so you've got to spend time building up his belief before you can scare him. But the trouble is, the Don likes to move. So he's going to basically run all about this boat as you're desperately chasing after him, trying to scare him. And it absolutely is doable. But uh, this this idiot here completely forgot about the plasm restriction. And what happens when you've run out of plasm? Well, this. No, that ain't the right. Yeah, this game's brutal. Like, there was no time for me to actually react to that in any way doesn't feel great and yes that meant that I had to restart the whole level I had to go chase the Don around with my ghosts again but this time I was very 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 careful and made sure not to exceed that plasm bar honestly I think that that's probably going to be my main gripe with Ghostmaster for a game that plays fairly fast and loose with its mechanics the failure state can occur very 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 rapidly and for my final anecdote I'm just going to talk about the level the unusual suspects 
the recommended ghost pack for this is largely useless because it's going to recommend to you ghosts that can be put in one place in the prison and nobody will really visit that place for a while which means that for a good chunk of the level your squad might as well just be like a three ghost squad instead of a five ghost squad but again this is a minor gripe because i don't have to use that recommended squad so let's conclude this should you play ghostmaster if you're looking for something that's a little bit different, it's off the beaten path, it's like The Sims, but in reverse, but it's a strategy. Yeah, you should. You absolutely should. Are you going to get frustrated with it? Quite possibly. Are you going to get a couple of good stories out of it? I, I think that you will. I can wholeheartedly recommend that you try out Ghostmaster. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.